I've got an important question for you. Is age just a number? It's a popular saying, age is just a number. A saying that's used frequently amongst people in relationships where one partner is much older than the other. And it's usually said as a response to someone criticizing that age disparity. But why criticize large age gaps in relationships? If our history and pop culture teach us anything, it's that large age gaps in romance, by which I mean an over 10 year gap, are completely common, especially when it pertains to an older man and a younger woman. But if this scenario is so normal, why does it catch so much flack in the press and on social media? Why does it make us feel kind of gross? A little special song for Jerry Seinfeld. This should really fuck his New Year's up. Seinfeld's girl is 17 and innocent with double D's. He saw those breasts and flipped his lid for a real young busty high school kid. While there's no scarcity of celebrities who've had these romances, from Elvis to Sonny and Cher to Woody Allen to Celine Dion, R. Kelly, Jerry Seinfeld, Scott Disick, Megan Fox, Dane Cook, you get the picture. Today, I want to focus on relationships when women are 18 to 25 years old, which 25 is when research shows a woman's brain is fully developed. I'm not going to spend too much time picking apart adult men with underage girls, because that is gross no matter what state or country you live in, so case closed on that. And I'm not covering women older or LGBTQ plus relationships because that's a subject for another video and not a topic I can really speak to personally. I know what a lot of guys will say in response to this video, but if she's over 18, she's legal. So what's wrong with that? If there's grass on the field, play ball, right? If there's grass in the field, play ball, <laughs> you know, old enough to pee, old enough for me. Yeah. Cringeworthy aphorisms aside, there is nothing legally wrong with someone in their 30s, 40s, 50s dating an 18 year old. But then why in practice do these romances feel like this guy is describing them? In today's video, I'm giving you four quick tips to pull far younger girls out of bars and clubs and get them into your bed for same night lace. Even if you're a far older guy, even if you're in your 30s or 40s and 50s. That uncomfortable feeling arises because age gap relationships are inherently inequitable. In other words, no matter why or how you approach older men dating younger women in their teens and early 20s, the man in the relationship tends to wield either financial, social, or emotional power over the woman. And if you call bullshit on that idea, hear me out, because I'm not here to cancel men for dating teenagers, though examples like Jimmy Page, Prince, and David Bowie bum me the fuck out. I'm here to look, really look, at why people believe age gap romances are normal, how they can form harmful dynamics, and how these couples can actually succeed together. Yes, that's right. There's still a chance for your age gap relationship to be wry and lively. Wry and lively. Did that seem forced? Yeah, just like how they prank each other on social media on their birthdays. And that amazing joke is a good reminder to mention that if you want more of those and more videos about how we can work towards a more evolved masculinity, you're going to want to subscribe to my channel right now. Okay, so let's start off with why older men and younger women might be attracted to each other. Two years ago, when my girlfriend asked me what age men are most attracted to, loaded question, but I answered without blinking, around 23 years old because of evolution. To me, this was common knowledge. Women who are at their prime baby making age are going to be the most attractive to men of any age because men are able to father children well into their retirement years. I mean, if Mel Gibson has proven anything, other than you can make some good movies while hating women and Jews equally, it's that much older men can still pump out the kids. You've got not only a career, but you've got kids. This is gonna be your ninth, ninth kid. Whoa. Yeah, I've got stretch marks. What do you but the more I studied psychology, gender relations, and honestly, the more women I talked to, the more I realized I didn't have the full story. As far as my reasoning of evolution, well, there is research to support it. The tenets of evolutionary psychology argue that for producing children, men invest in resources such as food, shelter, and security, while women invest in more bodily health as to ensure the best chance of fertility. 
And because of these investments, older men who have naturally accrued more resources than younger guys will be more attractive, and younger women who are in the prime of their fertility will be more sought after. I actually don't think anyone said it more succinctly or in a more offensive accent than Al Pacino. This country, you've got to make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. The problem is, so often the money and power are used to objectify, control, and abuse the women in the service of that rich, powerful male ego. So let's take a look at this human evolution theory. It has been an easy and seemingly inarguable verification for justifying some helpful things, like how to best treat diseases, and some less helpful things like eugenics, which, if you don't know, is the type of scientific racism they used to use back in the day in North Carolina to sterilize black women, and in Nazi Germany to experiment on basically anyone who didn't look Aryan. So the theory is not as bulletproof as many men would like you to think. Oh, speaking of bullets, there's the scattergun theory, and that was made popular by a psychological study in the 1940s that was concluded through studying fruit flies, not humans, and it said that by and large, a male's potential reproductive success is limited by the number of females he mates with. Thus, males are fundamentally promiscuous and females are fundamentally selective. This notion sounded so good to men that it's stuck in the zeitgeist and carries on to this day. I know men are meant to be promiscuous because of evolution, but you made a commitment to a woman you love. But the thing about human evolution theory is that because it's a theory, the facts within it evolve with more time and study. Evolution theory is fine as long as you take into account the possibility of evolution happening. Numerous psychology researchers, primarily the few women in the field, call the scattergun theory into question, noting that the overwhelmingly white male researchers in neuroscience fall victim to confirmation bias that oversimplifies human behavior to skew toward male dominance. Basically, the men who are studying this want it to be real, and once women started kicking around the science, it proved to not be a hard and fast rule at all. She swoops in and she fucking ruined it. Now, if the conclusions seem a bit hazy in evolution theory, they get even less dialed in when it comes to emotional attachment psychology. I'm talking about what many people call daddy issues. Icing on the cake, I just found out my own wife has major daddy issues. Makes me wonder if that's the whole reason she's with me. It comes up all the time. The idea originates from Sigmund Freud's theory of the Oedipus complex, where a child has an unconscious sexual desire for the opposite sex parent and a hatred for the same sex parent. This imagines young women craving the attention of older men because of unrequited feelings for their fathers. While Freud is probably one of the most famous thinkers of the 20th century, his theory has been dusted under the rug by the psychology community the last several decades, mainly when researchers realized his entire theory originated from researching one little boy. Little Hans is what they call him, seriously. And Hans's father, a supporter of Freud's theories, did most of the psychoanalysis on behalf of Freud. Not great research there, bud. As recent as 2016, psychology researchers found no significant difference in father attachment styles between women in similar age relationships and women in age gap relationships. In fact, they found that 74% of the women in age gap relationships enjoyed a healthy fatherly relationship that was not emotionally connected in that daddy issue way. This is a great example of how an idea can feel true, but it doesn't have much going for it except for it's a popular and widespread idea. Kind of like how Adam Sandler liked the idea of Kevin James replacing Chris Farley as part of his old SNL crew, but it doesn't actually work in practice. Every vote counts. So evolution theory doesn't hold water, daddy issues are bullshit, but there is one major reason why age gap romances happen, and that's social role theory, or what we generally call gender roles. This is where the traditional division of labor between the sexes has resulted in women fulfilling the role of homemaker, and men typically fulfilling the role of provider. Dads and moms have different roles for a very good reason. When I was married to your mother, for example, <laughs> I was the provider, mm -hmm. she the unquenchable bonfire that consumed my time, money, and youth. 
As psych professors Leigh Miller and Agnew point out in their popular 2011 paper, if women are more likely to anticipate that they will be staying home to raise children, and men are more likely to anticipate being responsible for paying the bills, women would attempt to seek male partners who are successful wage earners, while men would attempt to seek female partners who are competent at domestic tasks. Now, I'm not here to negate traditional gender roles, but I am here to point out that they don't apply as fixed positions in our society anymore. To use traditional gender roles as an excuse for any behavior is to deny how our culture has changed. We are at a point now where anyone legitimately can fulfill whatever role they want. There's nothing wrong with liking traditional gender roles as long as you choose those roles. Like in my experience with my girlfriend. The days when I'm carrying wood for a fire, building furniture, or paying for all the groceries can actually be a big turn on for her. And the same goes for me when she decides to treat me to my favorite home cooked meal. Thinking about it now, sometimes pandemic feels like I turned into this guy. I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. Lumberjack? <gasps> but the difference for us is that it's equally a turn on for me to see her kick ass directing a TV crew of 70 people. And it's a turn on for her when I feed, walk, and bathe the dogs. Traditional gender roles have been inherited by our generation. But that doesn't mean we can't shift them to a place where men stop viewing empowered women as a threat to their identity. And instead, maybe they see them as someone who adds real value to the partnership outside of how their body looks. Traditional gender role theory is where the terms gold digger and sleep your way to the top come into play. So what has Lucinda told you about me? Did she call me a gold digger and a slut and a moron? She never said moron. Those phrases and labels completely takes out the motivations of the man in the equation. Up until roughly the past 10 years with Twitter, men have hardly been impactfully vilified for wielding their power over the younger women in their lives. Actually, men get complimented for it. As Jerry Seinfeld points out in a 1993 interview with Playboy magazine about his 18-year-old girlfriend, guys I hadn't heard from in years called to say, congratulations, good for you. My women friends, some of them, were really hostile about it. They didn't like it. But the fact is, I don't meet that many women I like, period. So when I like someone, I don't care about her race, creed, or national origin. If I like her, I don't care. I don't discriminate. If she's 18, if she's intelligent, that's fine. What's funny about this is Seinfeld's evoking this idea that worrying about a partner's age is somehow similar to racial discrimination instead of him having a responsibility to understand the psychological development of girls because she is a girl. If you're 38 and you want to enter a relationship with a 17 year old, which he did, what does consent even mean? So is age just a number? The answer is no. Age isn't just a number, it's experience, it's knowledge, wealth, age is power. There's a reason why 91 out of the top 100 richest people on earth are over 50 years old. You may have noticed more and more stories the past few years where women have come forward about the celebrity men they dated in their teens and early 20s, traumatizing them sexually, emotionally, or both. Uh, Marilyn Manson and Evan Rachel Wood, R. Kelly and multiple teen girls, Chris D'Elia and multiple teen girls, Jeff Ross and multiple teen girls, and by the time you're watching this, there might even be a similar story in the news right now. I'd like to show you a clip to kind of shed light on what it's like to be on the receiving end of an age gap relationship abuse. When I was a teenager, I met a man. I looked up to him in many ways and felt like we had a special bond and I had no intention of it turning into something romantic. When it eventually did, I wasn't sure how to stop it as he had a certain charisma and power and I quickly surrendered to his charms. In the beginning, he treated me like a princess. I was smart, but a smart 18-year-old is still an 18-year-old and I thought I had fell in love. It wasn't until much later that I realized everything he had told me was a lie and part of what is called the grooming process. He cut me off from my close friends and family one by one by exhibiting rage in some form or another when I was in contact with them. The only way I knew how to calm him was to give him what he wanted, which was me all to himself in total isolation. By the time I realized I was in a bad situation, I felt completely trapped and terrified for my life. You can choose to look at these scenarios as a few bad apples or maybe none of your business, but that is a choice to be ignorant to abusive dynamics that keep happening all around us and ignoring them is what keeps them from getting better. 
it's our responsibility to understand the power dynamics at play. It doesn't happen with every age gap relationship, but we do need to recognize what could be happening and be comfortable calling out abuses of power when we see them. That's how we move forward. Okay, let me take a moment to show you some photos of celebrity couples with age gaps and really just check in on how you feel about them. Harrison Ford and Calista Flockhart. Harrison and Calista first met at the 2002 Golden Globe Awards when Ford was 60 and Flockhart was 38. Then we have Julius Tennant and Viola Davis. The couple first met on set of their TV show City of Angels. Then we have Dane Cook and Kelsey Taylor. Neither has publicly commented on how they met, but Cook did have this to say about her on Jimmy Kimmel. My girlfriend and I, we get a lot of crap from people because we have an age difference. I'm 46 and she's 20. Oh, wow, you do have an age difference, yeah. Thank you for the Snickers of approval. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't judgment at all. <laughs> people are like, you're robbing the cradle. I was like, she hasn't slept in the cradle for like nine years. Yeah. <laughs> so why are we grossed out by that last clip? No matter what your gender, in your early 20s, you're developing your persona as a liberated adult. And if you date a guy who is far past that phase, there is a possibility of that older guy telling you who you should be instead of you finding out for yourself. Just so you know, I can talk about this from personal experience. When I was 31, I briefly dated a 21-year-old for three months. I didn't seek her out, we were set up by a friend, and I'll admit there was something exciting and novel to me about spending time with someone that much younger than me. Outside of the experiential and cultural differences, I think we had a pretty good time. But I could feel how much I controlled our dynamic and how she had a tendency to self-objectify to draw me closer as I pulled away. Looking back at it, knowing now what I didn't know then, I kind of regret it. And my confusion over that dynamic at the time may have hurt her feelings in the process. The thing that's scary to me, knowing that control, is that I worry the power dynamic could be just as easily wielded by someone who was not keeping the young woman's worth and inner world in mind. The main detraction to these older men, younger women age gap relationships comes down to an imbalance of social and psychological power. So how can age gap relationships work? People are going to continue to be attracted to whoever they want to be attracted to, and that's a fucking beautiful thing. Age gap partnerships can be successful if they keep in mind a few things. Number one, acknowledging the inequity. Letting the person with less financial, social, or emotional power set the tone and pace for how the relationship evolves. Also, you need open communication making honesty so commonplace that when you want to have a talk with your partner, it doesn't feel super dramatic. And lastly, reverence for what each of you bring to the team, supporting and empowering each other with verbal and emotional acts that recognize how your partner helps the overall team. Even if you have an unequal dynamic going into the relationship, you can aim to be congruent with each partner meeting each other where they are and not using any disparity of power against them. And if you still think it's unmanly and against your evolution to give up some control over your partner, isn't it less manly to admit that evolution gives you no control over your own mind? At least if you're cognizant of the possible inequities going into the relationship, it'll set you up to be more of a Harrison and less of a Manson. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get even more videos about evolving masculinity and helping the inner lives of men. And special thanks to my producer and older girlfriend, Allison Mandel, for helping me with this video. See you next time on Real Feels.